think while you were there, you kind of took on digital marketing, which I don't know what digital marketing was in 2008, <laughs> but like... It was very different. <laughs> I know, like what? I mean, there's no Instagram. <laughs> Facebook was like just getting started. Twitter was just getting started. I actually don't even know when Twitter got founded. It might have got founded like 2009. So like... Twitter had just like, started. So yeah, it, yeah, yeah. it was actually prior to 2008. But yeah, Twitter okay. was, was very new. Yeah. So what, what did digital marketing look like then? And then what have you seen? Like what have, you know, what have been the, the patterns that you've noticed considering you've kind of been in it for so long? Yeah, I mean, I think you hit it on the nail. Um, it was a lot simpler. Uh, so, <laughs> so I would say uh, heavy focus on like email marketing, yep. on, you know, traditional banner ads. Oh, uh, good old banner you, ads. If, if, yeah, old <laughs> banner ads, if you can remember those. Uh, that's hilarious. It was also, if you think about uh, just search, it was really all about keywords. Yeah. Uh, yep, so that yep. was the extent of They were of simpler times was. back then. <laughs> much simpler times and we were just starting to think about you know like what the impact of this social media thing you know would be on consumer behavior so twitter had just started uh not that long i think facebook had just kind of kicked off and then youtube uh yep, so yep, we were yep. also starting to think about how video uh really played into the whole equation so uh much much simpler for sure i think the iphone was probably like a year old uh so that all <laughs> Also gives you perspective as you think now on how much access consumers have just through their iPhone. Um, it was a lot different, and I think you know now as you think about the evolution of of what that looks like today. You know, it's a lot more complex. Um, the consumer journey is uh, offline and online is is so uh, blended uh, mm -hmm. that you know it really is truly an omni-channel solution that you have to figure out, and it's a lot more it's really about content being where she is how she wants to consume it and tailored to her mindset in every way shape and form right so mm -hmm. uh and and not to mention that as a result of all of these smartphones um there is so much more access to other brands to distractions yeah. um to so many other things that it's forced you to also think about much more snackable uh content that can be consumed really quickly you know no one's looking at the long form videos um so you know a lot has shifted i mean i would i would venture to say that it's almost night and day from from yeah. where it was in 2008 for sure and I think the the thing you hit on there that's really interesting as well is this idea of distractions and other brands, right? Because now, mm -hmm. you know, if I wanted to create a brand, I can go to a private label manufacturer and come up with a logo and create a Shopify website and have a product up in, you know, three to six months. And that's, you know, obviously creates, I think one of the things I've thought a lot about that I'd be curious to get your opinion on is like, if you were to think about, you know, brand building, probably up until, you know, kind of during the time that you were there and then up until, let's call it the last 10 to 15 years, you know, if I walked into a store and I had mm -hmm. a brand that was there and I had Revlon here and then some other brand I'd never heard of, it was very hard for me to get information on that product, right? Like right. other than if I talked to somebody, maybe they could give me a little information, but there really wasn't the, the ability to discover new brands is pretty, pretty hard, right? And so in a lot of ways, um, you know, the brand was like a signal of the quality, right? Like I know mm -hmm. if I buy this product from Sally Hansen, it's gonna be of at least this quality. And so like I can trust this brand and trust multiple products in this brand, whether it's mm -hmm. a nail brand product or this or that or the other thing. Um, but now, right, that's become a lot less uh, important, right? Because I can go into a store, I can Google it, I can watch a YouTube video, I can read the reviews on the, the retailer website. And so it makes these kind of larger brands um, it's a more challenging environment, right? So like, how do you as a, how do you as a bigger brand, like navigate that? Right. And I talked about it a little bit earlier, but, um, I'm trying to think of the, the actual question I have, like, it just seems like such a big challenge as a big brand. Um, how do you continue to stay truly differentiated in each one of the categories that you're in? Like, what's that process look like? I think that's a question I have. 
Yeah, I mean, I, th I think it's the age old uh, question that I think we're all trying to uh, figure out. And I think even where we started this conversation, thinking about mm -hmm. COVID, I think, you know, even um, the, the amount of time that people spend digitally has only increased significantly. Yep, yep, right. Yep. So, um, so yeah, it's definitely a challenge. I, I think that, uh, in many ways, the big brands have to, uh, figure out how to play that, that same game, uh, making yep. sure that you're investing in ratings and reviews, um, mm -hmm. that you're present, uh, where those other brands are present and when they're considering uh, and comparing products and that you are giving them a compelling reason uh, to buy with, you know, uh, signals of, of the same quality that you've always stood for. Um, I think, you know, one of the things that we have working in our advantage is a couple things. Um, but, you know, one, I think, is uh, just the amount of support and, and delivering foot traffic. Um, yep, you know, yep. I think that's and, and driving awareness. I think there is some benefit that bigger brands have relative to the, the smaller ones that you just have to capitalize on it in the right way to make mm -hmm. it um, work for the you. The only um, way they can get discovered is digitally, right? So like in a lot correct. of ways, that's a big uh, inhibitor, right? Like physical presence does matter um, in a meaningful way. It, it does. And, and you have to figure out the fact that they're, we're still very accessible as you think about our distribution channels. Um, mm -hmm. So it's easy and you can't underscore the importance of that uh, experience that that experience that you have real time uh, with products um, uh, and, and so I think it's how do you really tap into that um, in a way that gives you a leg up on some of these other brands that aren't as easily accessible but still offer the same things that they do as well when it comes to customization personalization you know uh, uh, ratings and reviews um, great content above the fold you know I think it's that and um, yeah, so yeah. it really has raised the bar on how we have to connect in with consumers but at the end of the day what um, you know really driving them in store is where we have the advantage um, and and once we do making sure that the experience pays out, um, and, and that you close the sale. And so it's, it's not an easy, um, a, a equation at all, but it definitely gives us, um, something to really tap into as an advantage, uh, that we really have to capitalize on.